everybody. So what we uh, prepared today, uh, well, it's gynecologic. So the first one is on menopause because menopause is very, well, especially with the patients that we see in the clinic, a lot of them are menopausal age women. So that's why we decided to make a presentation on menopause. So it's basically an overview of how we diagnose menopause, um, which includes the Western as well as the Oriental medical perspectives. And at the end, we'll be giving you some uh, tips. You know, mostly it, it's, it's like, um, like physical activities that you guys can do when you are experiencing menopausal symptoms. Okay. So what is menopause? Menopause is the final menstrual period. It is universal and irre irreversible, and it is the normal part of the aging process as it involves a woman's reproductive life. So at some point in our lives, by about, four, well, the average is about 45 years old, by, but by the time you're about 40 years old, um, you're going to have some irregularities in the menstrual cycle. So by that time, you will probably have um, the, the length of the menstrual cycle will be longer or shorter or the flow will be less. And this is all normal. This is all part of um, the aging process. So a lot of people actually who are like, um, who are in their, if you come in with menstrual irregularities at like in your in less than 35 years old, then that's something to be worried, uh, that's something for you to be worried about. But if you're about above 40 years old and it's starting to have some irregularities or abnormalities, it's actually perfectly normal. So menopause is actually uh, diagnosed when you already don't have your period for about 12 months. So if you say that you don't, you've had, you haven't had your period for about six months, that's still not considered menopause. Okay. Um, so 12 months, no menses, that's already, um, that's already considered menopause. So menopause is actually characterized by a, a myriad of symptoms. And these are all related to the decrease of estrogen in our bodies. So as mentioned, uh, menopause is usually manifested with irregular menses. And then there are vasomotor and urogenital symptoms such as vaginal dryness and dyspareunia. And dyspareunia is actually um, sexual discomfort or painful sexual uh, activities. You may also experience some sleep disturbance or insomnia. So that's why people who are um, at the older age, they tend to like um, have difficulty sleeping or have difficulty uh, staying asleep. And also by this time, women would experience um, uh, mood swings. Mostly it's depression or irritability or uh, increase in anxiety. So I, um, menopause usually starts from 45 to, uh, the average is about 45 years old, like I mentioned. So there are actually uh, stages before you reach menopause. So and this is also related to the age that you are in. Like pre-menopause, this is probably at the age of 35 to 40. There's no, there are no noticeable changes yet, but you, but some women would actually experience changes in the menstrual cycle. By perimenopause, there's already irregularity in your menstrual period. So menopause is actually, um, um, the perimenopause starts about one to five years before you actually have menopause. So by perimenopause, you will have irregular periods, weight gain, mood swings, and more. But you're still having uh, menstrual cycles, although it's very regular at that point. So menopause, like uh, so, the the range is 45 to 50 years old. But the average, they the studies have found it's about 51 years old. And like I said, it's basically you don't have any periods for about one year. And there are factors that can cause uh, early menopause, such as smoking or undergoing hysterectomy or ophorectomy, which, is, which means um, your uterus as well as your ovaries are removed. Um, having uh, congenital abnormalities, like a fragile, uh, if you are a fragile X carrier, so this is a, uh, an, an X chromosome disorder, or having autoimmune disorders such as uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, so SLE, um, living at high altitude and having a history of receiving chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So what causes menopause? Um, in the Western medical uh, perspective, it is basically because of the lower estrogen uh, levels in your body. And estrogen is actually secreted by the oocytes or the ovary, um, the eggs in your ovaries, basically. By this time, your 
egg bank is actually decreasing. So if you have less eggs, um, there's not enough uh, eggs or follicles that are, that are secreting estrogen. So menopause results from the loss of ovarian sensitivity to gonadotropin stimulation, which is directly related to follicular attrition. So this means that even if your follicular stimulating hormone or your FSH is elevated, your oocytes or your ovaries are no longer uh, maturing. Therefore, it cannot reach a level where it can actually produce um, a significant amount of estrogen. So oocytes in the ovaries undergo atresia, or they basically shrink throughout a woman's life cycle, resulting in a decline of both the quantity and quality of follicles. So the variable menstrual cycle length during menopausal transition is due more to a shrinking follicular cord size than to follicular failure. So meaning, so basically it means if you have less uh, follicles, there's not enough estrogen. In, in contrast to follicular failure, which you can actually see in some patients less than uh, 39 years old, 35 years old, there are women who would actually come to you and then they would, wouldn't have any um, menstrual cycles. And it is because their follicles uh, fail to produce uh, estrogen and that is abnormal. Where in contrast, menopause, basically um, you, don't, you don't have enough eggs to produce um, uh, estrogen anymore. So that, men so menopause is normal. Ovarian follicular uh, failure is abnormal. So like I said, the common menopausal symptoms are hot flashes, insomnia, vaginal dryness, dyspareunia, weight gain or bloating, having mood changes, irregular menses, uh, breast tenderness or macedonia or nostalgia, depressive episodes as well as headaches. So this basically summarizes the stages of a person may experience from 35 years old um, up, to, up, to, uh, up to her death, basically. <laughs> okay, so I included this one because osteoporosis is one of the most common problems or comorbidities of menopause. And it is, um, it is something that we need to address as a uh, as uh, healthcare providers. So osteoporosis is defined as a bone mineral density uh, uh, that is equal to or greater than 2.5 standard deviations below the peak bone mass or T-score. So you can get this T-score by actually uh, requesting for a densitometry test. So basically this is a, a test that is requested by your doctor to um, identify if you are osteopenic or osteoporotic. So osteopenia is largely a preventable uh, sequela of menopause, and this is when your uh, BMD or bone mass density is between 1 to 2.49 uh, below T-score. So the risk factors of uh, having osteoporosis and osteopenia are being petite and thin women. So women who are like who are about 115 pounds or below are at increased risk to uh, develop osteoporosis, early menopause family history of osteoporosis, smoking, alcohol, and a sedentary lifestyle. So um, this is actually important that uh, senior citizens or women who are already in advanced age should still um, exercise to ensure that the muscles are healthy enough or strong enough to support to support the bones because the more that you are just sitting and you know sitting and not working out or not exercising um, it, incre it actually increases your risk to develop um, osteoporosis and um, you the problem with menopausal women is that um, if you end up having fractures it is basically all downhill from there their quality of life um, is very poor so according to the TCM perspectives, menopause is caused by a kidney essence deficiency. This is seen mostly in older age women, and it is due to the gradual consumption of essence with aging or depletion from other causes. So it is often seen in otherwise healthy individuals over the age of 50 years old. So as we have learned uh, with the basics of uh, TCM, we all start with a prenatal and the Postnatal, uh, postnatal essence. So the kidney essence is related to um, aging. Um, so by the time we reach 49 years old above, which is the, the, the normal cycle that the Chinese, the Chinese medicine um, believes in, 
um, there's a decline already of you know of your of your essence, which is not you know which is not good, but normal. It's still normal. So although the decline of kidney essence is gradual, lifestyle and dietary habits from childhood onwards determine what kind of menopause a woman is going to have, such as poor diet, overwork, and childbirth. So this is not um, a new concept. It's actually related. It's, it's very much related to how Western medicine um, sees menopause to or early onset menopause. So if you're not taking care of your body well, you've been abusing your body, you're not eating well enough, or you're stressed out all the time. Childbirth actually decreases um, the amount of calcium that you have. So I used to see women who would have multiple pregnancies and then they would lose their teeth. And it's because um, when you get pregnant or you become pregnant, you end up depleting a lot of your calcium um, deposits. So the calcium is taken out from your, from your bones. Um, so the, the main menopausal linked symptoms that, I, that is also common in the uh, Western perspective are vaginal dryness, hot flashes, and night, uh, night sweats. So the, the risk factors that can cause uh, menopausal, the risk or the etiology of menopausal problems or can um, increase or worsen uh, menopausal symptoms are emotional stress, being overworked, smoking, irregular diet, um, drinking a lot of uh, caffeinated beverages as well as alcohol. So for, um, for Chinese medicine, one of the treatments is acupuncture. And the goal of acupuncture is to tonify the kidney. It strengthens the Ren and Chong Mai. It subdues the Qi and it clears empty heat. So for this part, it's going to be, uh, Casey will take over. Hello. So when we're looking at menopause and searching for case studies and formulas used, we have several, many, many, many to, to, to dig into. Um, I found three primary ones that I like. Um, all of them, all of them have came from Taiwan and all of them have essentially Jia Wei Xiao Yao San, you know, augmented rambling powder as like the top formula used. Uh, and it's highly modifiable. Um, and like in, in one study it was 54,000 prescriptions, um, total and you know 15,000 prescriptions were Jiawei Xiao Yao San so it's a very very highly used formula to treat this most of these symptoms and it comes under several names um, listed here um, Danzhou Xiao Yao San it's actually even spelled completely different than Jiawei Xiao Yao San spelled here if you're really looking which is interesting um, and then we have the Latin names and so forth to to also call the formula. And Marin, can you skip to the next slide? And so we have Donggui in this formula and it tonifies blood, regulates mentis, invigorates and harmonizes blood and reduces the swelling. This is a huge herb for blood and relieving pain um, along with along with these other herbs here, Bai Shao, Gan Sao, and Chai Hu, uh, they're perfect for dysmenorrhea as well. It, it covers the bases on a lot of different issues and, and abdominal pain. Um, even with Bai Shao and Fu Ling, you have diarrhea during pregnancy and mild abdominal pain. Uh, this formula is highly functional for a lot of different um, pathologies. Um, whereas when we look at Mood MP and Jirtza and Chai Hu, as well as by shout for early menstruation, helps bloating and, and irritability, uh, as well as chi stagnation with heat. And now most of us know what these terms mean. Um, essentially it's pain, right? For, for the layman person, this helps with pain and the hot flashes and, and all these things that come along with menopause. And so by shao calms the liver yang, and, and that is in general heat that, that you know, kind of builds up it nourishes the blood, regulates menstruation, and it astringes the yin, which is the moisture. And so paired with Dong Gui, it nourishes yin and blood. And then Gansa regulates the relationship between liver and spleen. 
and nourish the sinews, also the epigastric, hypochondriac, any of the pain, that, the cramping that's happening. Uh, really good pairing of herbs in this formula. Fuling is our, is our Lasix, it's our, our drain the dampness herb. It's, it's primarily for, for the, the swelling, the, the spleen and, and resolving that extra dampness that's lingering in the system. And with Baiju, we're also tonifying the spleen and helping the digestion of this and, and processing this dampness. And all of these, you know, these, these three herbs are paired for stomach chi deficiency. So it helps with, you know, your, your diet and your, your digestion of food. And let's skip to the next slide. And so in, in other studies, this was the top formula in many, many other studies. And they, they definitely used other formulas um, from Dong Gui Xiao Yao San to Gui Ji Fu Ling Wan to Wen Jing Tang to Xiao Fu Zhu Yu Tang. So we have a lot of, and a lot of these herbs are in a lot of those other formulas. So Chai Hu is actually our lead in this formula. Um, it resolves the Xiao Yang disorder, which is the, the, the alternating issues and the, the fever. Um, it helps soothe the liver qi. So that, that irritability factor, uh, Chai Hu is a key one for that. As well as with Bai Shao, it helps the liver blood deficiency and liver qi stagnation. This, this formula treats dizziness and vertigo, uh, intercostal pain, uh, as well as menstrual irregularities, um, along with the, the, the liver qi stagnation. So with, with menopause, you, you can have emotional issues. This is, this is one of the key herbs to treat all those issues. And, you know, stepping outside of just menopause, you know, hepatitis, it, you know, with Gan Sao, this herb can treat hepatitis and, and pain in the upper right quadrant. So this is a really great pain herb too, and to move that stagnation. Mudan P is our cooler. It's a really cool herb. It smells really nice too. It clears heat, cools, harmonizes the blood, and it's good for deficiency fire, which is exactly what we're running into with menopause. And, and then the pain and the blood stasis and the, and the stuff that isn't clearing out, it helps clear that liver fire. And so when you pair these up with Jirtza, Chai Hu, and Bai Shao, the fire from the stagnation that causes all that heat and the headaches and all that, it can completely subdue all of that, the liver yang rising. So Jirtza is our triple heat clearer. It clears heat from all three burners. And so it's essentially going to cool the fire, cool everything, disperse the toxins, stop bleeding. It, it eliminates irritability and it drains damp heat. So paired with Moon MP, it resolves this, this chi level stagnation and heat for dysmenorrhea or, or any sort of headaches, dry, scratchy eyes that you can run into with um, men menopause as well. And so along with the pain, the rib pain, intercostal pain, headaches, you know, you name it, this herb can, can pair up really well with Chai Hu, Mudan Pi, and Bai Shao for the irritability and short temper and whatnot. And Jirgan Sao is a good uh, harmonizing herb. It tonifies the spleen as well. It has a ton of properties that we don't necessarily acknowledge, but it, it clears heat. It, it also relieves fire toxicity and it moderates and harmonizes the whole formula. And so we're tonifying the chi as well with this, this herb. And the last two here is Boha and Sheng Jiang. There are, you know, mint and ginger herbs. They're kind of like candy. These actually um, are almost three candies um, in our formula. We would be missing dots out would be the other candy. Uh, so Boha is, a, is added to the end of the formula if you're making it raw because it's mint. And this one disperses wind heat. Boha actually, mint could be just a tea separately also for a menopause and, and other heat related issues to, to benefit. It clears the head, clears the eyes, benefits the throat. It relieves stagnation of liver chi. And pair, when paired with Bai Shao and Chai Hu, it's perfect for liver chi stagnation with the pain, the flank issues here, the distension. And Xing Jiang, the, the ginger, primarily in this formula, it's reducing the toxicity of other herbs, but it's a huge herb for, for pain clearing clearing all kinds of stagnation and moving the blood. Uh, it's, it's a great combination. And so this formula um, in Taiwan on several different 
um, studies has came out on top. Um, one study had 3,400 women, another study had 54,000. And it's quite amazing to see just one formula work so well. Uh, and this formula treats, you know, essentially anything you can come across when you're, you're, you're dealing with menopause. And it's modifiable in that if we have more cold situations happening, we would probably pull some of these, these um, heat clearing herbs out to, to make this formula just Xiao Yao San, because that's the base formula and this is Jia Wei Xiao Yao. So that has the, the uh, big heat clears added to it. And so, yeah, we can go on to the foam roller technique. So when we're looking at um, menopause or dysmenorrhea or just pain, you know, in general, uh, foam rollers are, are kind of a hidden gem and the benefits are, are across the board, almost like massage. You know, we're alleviate, alleviating soreness, we're reducing inflammation that occurs during the muscle repair process, and it aids in the muscle repair recovery. And so when you're doing foam roller, you're helping prevent injuries by maintaining the length and tension and tightness in the balance of the muscle and the joint. Uh, it increases body flow and elasticity of the muscle tissue, the joints, and fascia. The body's connective tissue is what fascia is. And so this will help with mobility, overall well-being, a smoother appearance of fat, you know, under your skin. Like when you're out of alignment, the muscles aren't sitting right, the tissue on the outside isn't sitting right either. It's, it's quite interesting to see when things are in balance, everything looks smoother, even though you're not losing weight per se. So it also promotes relaxation. So you can truly like roll away your worries. <laughs> so foam rolling is a type of self myofascial release. And the, when the pressure is applied to certain parts of the body, it can relieve pain. Now, a staple warm up in many gyms, they have this practice that, you know, is significantly to reduce or increase the range of motion. Um, when combined with static stretching, foam rolling can lead to impressive flexibility improvements. And we have studies on that that we can refer to if anyone is interested. Foam rolling limits soreness and, and tightness by increasing blood flow and flexibility. So we have, you know, credible um, sources that also, you know, acknowledge foam rolling as a, a key staple in, in balance and health and well-being. So when the muscles are tight, the injuries such as tears are more likely to occur. So I, Marin and I have put a video together and we'll play that now about our foam. We are demonstrating foam rollers today. There are two types that we have here today. One is the firm and more narrow. And the fact that it's firm means it has far more pressure on your spine and back. And it might not be the favorite one for our uh, older clients. This one on the other hand is softer and it's wider so we have more chance of stability and controlling ourselves through the roll. So let's get started. So our first move is going to start here and we're going to roll up to the shoulder neck area and so Marin's going to lay back on that nice and gentle and there's there's levels to this. Um, level one you're going to have your hands out to the side and controlling your body because it, it's new for, for some people. And so we're going to roll all the way up to our, our shoulders. It's actually hard. I have to like float this out. I have to lift my head. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to come up and let it sit in the pocket right on our shoulders until you can roll your head. Yeah, exactly. okay. so, so now you can roll your head left and right. Like that? Uh-huh. Okay. And now roll up on your shoulders. Okay. And right. now in this position, sometimes we've got to pull our hair out of the way. We've got to reorganize ourselves. Get, if you've got long clothing on, you got to make sure you don't get caught under here. And so the next exercise here is focusing on the shoulders and neck issues. So we're going to put the weight on the inside of one of the scapulas in between the scapula and the spine. And then we're going to turn our head to the side. 
and we put our head up here like that to, for support. Okay. And then we're rolling the scapula area and then at the same time stretch. Good. And then stretch. Good. And we, I like to do this a few times to unlock the shoulders because they usually are stuck with adhesions. And so now we can switch and do the other side. This is great for frozen shoulder, any sort of neck and shoulder pain. I usually get my neck to kind of regulate. That's the word we're looking for here. Good. All right, and now pause, regain. And now from here, I usually get a lot of things loose from these three little exercises. Then I roll down the spine. Roll down the spine. Yeah, roll all the way down until you're sitting on your tail. Now we're gonna need to slide up a little bit. Ew. We're going to do our lower back. Yeah. Is it so good? Yeah. So this one is a back and forth, very short movements. And ideally you're focusing on the weight to be center on your tailbone and hips. And, and then you twist a few times to one side and then switch to the other side. And this is regulating our, our, our tailbone our lower back, our hips, good. And now the next one is a flip over to an IT band slash hip exercise. And so the concept of this one is you wanna be on it like this, going with your femur. And now there's level one, two, and three. This is level three, this is the most advanced. Level one, yeah, level one, you'd be up here. You might not even be able to straighten your leg out. Like yeah, and you want to roll over the hip bone, the top and bottom. So it's our greater trochanter is where we're focusing on. And this is good for hip pain, lower back pain, IT band, all kinds of issues for runners and normal people alike. And then we switch and do the other side. And now you can do this a few times I actually tend to do this at least twice because I feel like I get a lot of stuff loosened up and regulated off of this. My own work. Like yeah, so she's got her knee bent here, which is level one. Right. A lot of people can't bend their, straighten their leg out like that. So it's good to acknowledge that there's levels to this. This is the most advanced level for the athletes and, and you know, yogis and whatnot. Good. Okay, now the last one. So we're still in this situation where we're sitting on it and we put our weight to one side and you're just rolling the glute and hamstring. And this is also really good for tailbone pain, lower back pain, hip pain, you name it. Good, and then transfer the weight across to the other side and then focus on the other one real quick. That, that is our basic seven exercises to foam roll for joint regulation. Good job, Marin. So for the next part, uh, we also put some yoga poses that you can do to help you with your menopausal symptoms. So like I said, um, it's important for you to exercise, even if you're already a senior citizen, to ensure that your muscles are well are toned and that will avoid, that will at least prevent you from having fractures because of osteoporosis. So these are some of the yoga poses that you can do um, with modifications. So here's a... Okay, so for menopause, there are also um, yoga poses that you can do that would address uh, hot flashes, anxiety, so it, it palpitation sometimes, it, you know, th 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 there's actually a benefit with doing these yoga poses, especially if you're like very menopause or menopause. So the first pose is the forward bend, but except this time you're going to grab your, your big toes. So you can keep your, your feet hip width apart, you can keep your knees soft, okay, as, as much as you can. So if you need to bend like this, it's fine. Start with your hands on your hips and then bend forward. So again, always keep the knees soft and then eventually grab, grab your toes, your big toes, 
look up a little bit and then fold down so if you can do this it's great but you don't have to so just keep your knees soft so make sure that your neck is loose you can go you can say no you can go yes stay here for about five to ten breaths okay and then when you're done put your hands on your hips bound angle pose it's it's very uh, similar to you know what a pose that we do for menstrual pains basically you keep your soles together your legs are on you know butterfly basically you can uh, and then forward fold if you fold forward don't well you could do this but that's another another step a different uh, pose try to fold from your hips if that's too much for you you can get the block and put it on your head so with this one you can go as far as you can or as close as you want okay if it's too much you can put the blocks underneath okay and then just do like this that's good too that, that's gonna help you with your hips the next one is the bridge pose so we all know what the bridge pose is lie down and then lift your hips if you can't do this you can always get a block you can put it on the low medium or on high if you like make sure it's on the sacral part of your on the butt part and you can just stay here so again if that's too much for you you can go as high, just as high as you can but I find that putting a block will be more restorative so five to ten breaths the next pose is the dolphin pose so this one's a little bit difficult because it's going to require flexibility on the shoulders so you can do a downward facing dog first which is actually another um, pose you can get you can do if this is too much for you and you can't keep your your heel down you can always bend your knees and then just stay there stay like this it's fine but if you can stretch it press push away from the floor and try to lift your hips up suck your gut in this is going to be a good pose for you too so this is the downward facing dog and the other one is called the dolphin pose basically you fold your you fold your arms you can bend your knees too and then stay that way some people if the their shoulders are loose you can move a little bit as much as you can so five to ten breaths The second to the last one is called the bound triangle. So with the triangle, one of your foot should be facing the other way. You can step this far, more than hip width apart. And then reach to the other side. Try to reach your, your toe from here. Twist a little bit. Try to reach the roof with your other hand. If that's too much for you, you can always get a block. Put it, put your hand right there. From here, twist. And if you can, reach to the sky and stay this way for about five to 10 breaths. And then you have to do it on the other side. And then the last pose that you can do for menopause, it's called the hero's pose, which is very simple. You just have to pretend you're a ninja. So basically it's just like this, just sit like this for about five to ten breaths or a minute for as long as you can so basically you're just sitting down okay and then take deep breaths and then the breaths have to be long and as much as possible the inhale is the same length as the exhale nice work Marin. good job casey <laughs>
And that concludes our uh, presentation. Thank you.